Welcome to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, and for the next two weeks, we are coming to you from MJ Harrington Jewelers right here on Main Street in Newport, where they provide contemporary design with a classic feel. And as we come up to graduation and Mother's Day, this is the place for unique gifts. We'll head downstairs to visit with Kenny Bergeron, one of the MJ Harrington's fine craftsmen, who is a Jewelers of America certified bench technician with over 20 years of experience. Elise Crossman, the chair of Discover Sugar River Region, will bring us up to date on their efforts to tell the story of our beautiful area. And we'll close with Rebecca Corser in a history lesson on Warner's 250 years. Don't go away, we'll be right back to MJ Harrington Jewelers, where for over 75 years, they've been committed to crafting and caring for the finest jewelry. This program is supported by Main Street Bookends of Warner. For books, toys, games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art. Main Street Bookends of Warner. We all want our kids to grow up safe and healthy, so we show them how, and we tell them with honest conversations that let them know what we expect. That's especially important when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. Kids need to know the dangers and how to avoid them. And when it comes to pain medications, opioids, they need to know that they should never be taken without a prescription and never shared with friends or family. It's dangerous and illegal. So talk with your kids, because when you talk, they hear you. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, coming to you from a sneak peek place here at MJ Harrington Jewelers. We're down here in the shop and we get to talk to one of the jewelers down here. I'm joined by Kenny Bergeron, who's one of the bench jewelers down here. Hi, Kenny. Hi, how are you doing? This is a really fun place to be able to see and I think it's a, a little view that a lot of people don't normally get to see. Talk about what we're looking at and kind of your workspace here. Okay. Well, what we're looking at here, this is our scope and I use this for all the stone setting. And it's kind of cool to be able to get close and kind of see every little detail where you got to file away and make sure that stone sits just right. Okay. Then you have a little torch set up over here. This is for doing all your soldering. Okay. And so when you're sizing things, you want to solder them all up, make sure they're solid, clean them up, and then you, this, this bench right here will do all filing and sawing and sanding, kind of clean it all up, and then we can go over different steps yep. as well over in the corner here and okay. the rest of the stuff, which be polishing it up and doing a final polish. Amazing. Up. And are you everything from repairs and to creating something brand new? What's the process? How do people uh, start that? Well, it's really sometimes people just come in and they'll say, I would like to design something. So a lot of people know beforehand that we do that. And some people don't. So we, we advertise, you know, that stuff in the, in the papers. But it starts as a nice little sit down and, you know, I get to know the customer and we have a little back and forth and just figure out like what they have in mind, mm -hmm. you know, they actually tell you a little bit of, you know, who they're going to give this sure. to, you know, and, and so you learn just you know, what what they want and what they want to give to this person. Then you can really hone in on that and start doing sketches and then they'll approve the sketches and we'll get a little, you know, price range and all that for them. But they're usually involved like a, a, quite a few steps in the process and then every once in a while what I'll do is I'll send them like a, a couple of pictures here and there yep. this is the progress so far cool. and doing that and, and they love that they have that little bit of input sure and um, it's just it's really fun so they'll, they'll do that whole design and then later on they'll come back and we'll see the final piece and pick it up and really cool that you're part of that whole process yeah it, it is yeah. really cool I mean quite a few where they love to keep the stones mm -hmm. and we'll remelt the gold and make something brand new out of it and so it's still every little bit theirs and all we did was just the process of making it something yeah, different. Yeah, so cool. Whereas I have a ring right here I'm working on. This is platinum, and I'm starting this from complete wow. scratch. cool. And then built it all, and everything is really fun, but it all starts right there. So someone's designed that, and now you're making it come to life. Yep. Uh, talk about your experience leading up to how did you get into this industry? Uh, what's the training to get here? Just This is a fascinating, uh, unique job, I think. Yeah, um, geez, well, it started I want to say, I think it was almost 22 years ago now. I had a little bit of a background um, from high school where I was able, at Kearsarge, I took 
let's see, two metals class, three woodworking classes, and then one jewelry class okay. in high school. And believe it or not, this is where I landed was wow. jewelry, you know? But I started out as an engraver. And that's when you just kind of put in a template and engrave special little gifts and stuff sure. like that. And I went to Kansas for a hand graving course and wow. did that. So you kind of get experience all yeah. over. Also learn from this guy over okay. here. I mean, Dave Ernster has been <laughs> beside me for most of the time and teaching me and guiding me and showing me stuff. So. Cool. So it's just really cool in that. So you keep learning constantly. It's it's always fun to learn. Amazing. Yeah, well, it is, and I'm sure there's things all the time that stump you or you know yep. got to start over, try something new, and yeah. yeah, really cool. Well, this is a really wonderful view to see. I think it's something that obviously we're aware of the the showroom upstairs, but to see down here in, in just the uh, very fascinating hands-on part of MJ Harrington's, it's great to see. Kenny Bergeron, thanks for joining me. For over 75 years, MJ Harrington Jewelers has been committed to crafting the finest quality jewelry for their customers. They know that behind every unique piece of jewelry is a treasure of a priceless memory. MJ Harrington's is dedicated to the community as the precious gemstones they use and a craft they take just as seriously. When we return, I'll be sitting down at the Lake Centipede Chamber office with Elise Crossman of Discover Sugar River Region to hear about their efforts. Now these words from the good local businesses that help keep your Yankee Chronicle on the air. This program is supported by Echo Communications, a digitally integrated commercial printer and mailer located in New London, New Hampshire since 1997 with roots going back much further as the country press, AccuMail, and the home of the Kearsarge shopper, Echo Communications. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for youth. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs and dangerous things like metals into your body. And nicotine, which can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping. Because when you talk, they hear you. We all want our kids to grow up safe and healthy, so we show them how, and we tell them with honest conversations that let them know what we expect. That's especially important when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. Kids need to know the dangers and how to avoid them. And when it comes to pain medications, opioids, they need to know that they should never be taken without a prescription and never shared with friends or family. It's dangerous and illegal. So talk with your kids, because when you talk, they hear you. Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, coming to you from the chamber here on Main Street in New London. There's always a lot going on. It's good to catch up with them every year. And I'm now joined by Elise Crossman, who's talking about Discover Sugar Ridge River Region. It's it the is. triple R's, right? It, it is. It is. <laughs> but it's important. It's important. It's tell exciting. Us, tell us all um, about it. That essentially, it is a project that came out of Sullivan County. Okay. Um, doing some work on building some identity, some pride in our region as a whole. Fun. And so so uh, kind of branded it as the Sugar River region okay. uh, because the Sugar River, of course, flows from Lake Sunapee all the way through this uh, chunk of space that we're talking about yeah. over to the Connecticut River in Claremont. So Amazing. kind of and that or its tributaries go out. So that was the common theme across okay. the area. And of course, we want you to discover it. So sure. discover Sugar River region. Okay. Uh, and so now it is in the formations of being its own nonprofit organization Wonderful. as a DMO, has a board of directors, doing all kinds of really awesome stuff with a focus on not only tourism of bringing people to the area and making them aware of all of the really awesome things we have here, but also those that live here discovering that maybe just next door there might be something wonderful right. that they don't know about, uh, as well as helping build that community pride piece. Fabulous. And how did this all come to be? That's a, a fun, uh, <laughs> let me try and condense that. Uh, so uh, quite a few years ago, about six years ago, uh, the county government as a whole, Derek Furland started looking at like ways to increase some things here in terms of uh, visibility and traffic and sure. um, all of those parts. 
And so, uh, long story short, there's a series of other folks that worked on it, and then we then found that, like, hey, yeah, there is a need for this. Amazing. And let's do it. And one of those big things is the region is really blessed with having three really fantastic chambers of commerce, right. but they're all small and yep. single person operations. Yeah. And so, um, this is a, a great complement to that, Amazing. not at all a competitor. So, you're working with each chamber. Absolutely. Fantastic. And what's that partnership hope to look like? Yeah, so it's really fantastic. All three chamber directors have a seat on the board of directors okay. um, and are very actively involved in all that is happening with Discover Sugar River region. And it's wonderful that there's a lot of overlap too. A lot of things are being done between the three uh, chambers, some partnership events, and we just uh, learned about a trip to Ireland that all three yes. are going on, which is so awesome. Uh, and so this is a nice way to kind of combine all of them together. It absolutely is. Bringing in not only then a representative from the county government, but as well as also reaching individuals and businesses and organizations that have a stake in the sure. community. Sure. So talk about how you're promoting our region, you know, outside of you just went to Canada to talk about how great we are here. Yes, <laughs> actually, uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to represent Discover Sugar River region in Montreal just a couple weekends ago cool. um, at the uh, Outdoor Recreation, excuse me, Outdoor Adventure Recreation Expo, cool. uh, which is a really fantastic two-day event with um, mostly international entities um, in Montreal we had a fantastic exhibitor space along with a couple of our friends from other nooks and crannies of New Hampshire cool. representing why there's a bunch of outdoor recreation here and hi you should come visit yeah um, really fantastic it's close proximity for those coming down from Montreal it's just a quick you know three-hour drive and in comparison our fees for things are not as expensive as oh, some of the other places so for those that are looking to maybe maximize those budgets this is place to Fabulous. be. Fabulous. Is the hope too that you can go on uh, to a website or find information on just, I'm looking for hiking or I'm yes. looking for a place to explore or we have so many historic things Absolutely. around here. So the yeah. website is really fantastic and having um, lots of different pages that are exactly that. You're interested in hiking, here is a fantastic page on that. Interested in camping, here is our camping properties that are here. You know, here is a arts and culture, here's history, here's there's also a running events calendar that's not necessarily our as the organization's events, sure. but events that are happening within the community. So it's the chambers events, other nonprofits events, businesses events that would be of appealing uh, for the general public. Yeah, one stop shop for things happening in this region. And the hopes for future events. Yeah, for sure. uh, a Sugar River trivia night. Fun. We had grand plans of having a really fantastic event at Eastman. Um, and then we had a fantastic event at Bascom Farm um, for maple sugaring. Oh, that's um, such a cool place. The facility, all the awesomeness. So it's similar things like that. So for the summer we have hopes of meetups for hikes or water activities, leading into the fall of meetups for you know apple picking yeah. or, or hay rides or, or those types of things. Amazing. Um, and anyone can participate. Anybody can participate. There's no fee to participate. Um, we, it's just a really, we, we were hearing from a lot of folks that they maybe don't necessarily have a really robust friends yeah, network here. Right. Um, and here's a great way to have yeah. that. Network, meet people, try new things. Fantastic. Yeah. If people want more information, if they want to become involved, uh, what's the best way to do so? And how can someone become yeah, involved? Yeah, absolutely. We have a number of different ways. We have a fantastic thing we're doing right now is called Sugar River Socials. Okay. And so monthly meetups that have uh, a social component to it great uh, and then those are all listed on our website okay as well as we send out currently it's a monthly newsletter okay. but with hopes <laughs> that it'll be a little bit more regular good but that information again is all on our website we would love for folks to be involved in terms of attending those events mm -hmm. in terms of telling us what they'd like to see for those events as well as hopping on a committee or if they're really interested the board of directors has some available seats as oh, well good to know good way to give back absolutely yeah well uh, I love this idea I think it's really fun I think it's uh, uh, we are very lucky to have this region and we should be showcasing it as a destination for people to come and check out. For sure. Well, Elise Crossman, really nice to meet you and thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you. Check out their website, sugarriverregion.org, to learn more about why our region is the perfect place to live, work, and play. When we come back, Rebecca Corser of the Warner Historical Society will give us a short history of their 250 years. Now these messages from a Yankee Chronicle underwriter. Please let all of our underwriters know you appreciate their involvement in making this show possible. You could be one also. Just give us a call. This program is supported by 
HR Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Their full service model offers oil delivery, propane, motor fuels with design, installation, service, and maintenance of all types of oil, gas, and alternative energy systems, as well as air conditioning, water conditioning systems, and their highly trained and friendly staff will assist you throughout the process of buying, installing, and servicing a full line of energy products. H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Prescription drug pricing points to corporate mountain. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. It's about your right to be informed. Today, no. there are real threats to press freedom. Reaching residential areas. And your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important That's to you. Question. Before it's too late, understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. Learn more at wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Welcome back to your Yankee Chronicle. I'm Abby Peel, your host. 250 years ago, the town of Warner became official. Join us now from the Warner Historical Society Upton Chandler House to Rebecca Corser. Tell us more. So Warner is celebrating its 250th anniversary this year. Uh, we became incorporated on September 3rd, 1774. But of course, people have been living here for thousands of years, indigenous people and they were traveling up and down the river systems here, the Warner River, the Kentuckook to the Merrimack. We know that they had uh, site locations, particularly over in the Henniker area. There have been remnants found along the Warner River of them being here, uh, fishing plummets, grinding stones. Um, so they were definitely here. And Warner tried to become established with settlers from Amesbury, Massachusetts in the 1730s and 40s and they built five crude log cabins. They tried to start working on a mill. They would come up here during the summer months and go return to Amesbury uh, during the winter and they came back in the spring and their cabins and the mill site had been burnt by the Native Americans. So it's really not until, until the 1760s after that that Warner starts to have a flood of settlers arrive and then start the community which would become a township in 1774 and that was granted by the King's Council. We were not independent at that time and the settlers had been calling it New Almsbury because they had come from Amesbury but governor and council wanted the name to become Warner probably after men from Portsmouth who sat on the King's Council by the name of Warner. So Warner is uh, defined really by the river that runs through it. It bisects practically half of Warner with Mount Kearsarge to the north, which you see in this lovely painting by Mimi Wigan. And then we have the Warner River running before the uh, village here. And then the Minks are in the south. So that helped to find where Warner was going to be settled first in Davisville along the river where the mills were eventually established and then coming up through what we know today as Lower Warner, Bagley, the Warner Village, Waterloo, Roby, and Melvin Mills. The water power along the river would help to establish these little villages. So if there was a drop in the water naturally then they would capitalize on that and sawmills, uh, grist mills, clapboard, shingles, paper, carding, wooden pegs, wooden hubs, chairs, excelsior, bedsteads, all sorts of things were produced along these little villages along the Warner River. And what would help them to grow would be the establishment of the railroad which came through in 1949 
and then eventually up through Bradford. And then it would take another mm, 14 years or so before it could get up over the Newberry Cut to Lake Sunapee. But once that was established, then farmers and mill owners could ship their goods up and down the East Coast. And farmers could send their milk, their eggs, their produce to the larger markets, particularly in the Boston area. So after the Civil War, uh, people obviously started moving west for uh, better agricultural opportunities. Industrialization was happening and people were moving to work in mills in various locations. Uh, but for farmers, after the Civil War, agricultural colleges started to be established. There was changes in technology that farmers could use on their farms. There was a, a movement to improve the fertilization of the land so they could produce more hay. Maple sugaring was happening. Um, initially, farmers would boil their syrup down for sugar because it was easier and more compact to ship and it was dry and it would not spoil. Once canning came along, then they could start canning their syrup and start started to send their liquid uh, maple syrup to market. Also with the trains going through to Newberry, uh, and people having more income, summer tourist season started and boarding houses were established. And people would travel through on seven to eight trains that were going through Warner at that time during the week to bring people up to the lakes during the summer. The first snow train came to Warner, believe it or not, in 1931. Uh, people came up from Boston for the day. There was probably between two to 300 people. We had no ski tow at that time, but they were willing to climb the hills, Torrey Hill, Burnt Hill, and ski down. And it's not gonna be until uh, World War II that Jack Chandler would buy a Quonset hut and a tow rope from Kentuckook and bring it here on, to Breakneck Hill and started the first ski tow. And things started to take off. People came to town, bought up the old summer boarding houses and created hotels that were very busy during the winter months. So for the 250 years, the committee decided that we wanted to stretch events out over the course of the year and make these events fun, informative, uh, available to all sorts of age groups. In May, we'll be uh, involved with Spring into Warner, which is on the 18th. We're revealing a large cake on the lawn of Sugar River Bank. Jim McLaughlin has handcrafted beautifully carved signs for both the Dalton Covered Bridge or Joppa Bridge, some people know it as, and also the Waterloo Bridge uh, in Warner. And the, the uh, signs are quite striking and they'll be on both ends of the bridges and we will start unveiling that at 10 at the Dalton Bridge and 1045 in Waterloo. We're working with the New England Covered Bridge Association on a booklet they'll be producing about covered bridges uh, and railroad covered bridges that existed um, along the Warner River. And that will come out later in the year. May 27th is the annual Mem Memorial Day Parade that we do in conjunction with the American Legion. Kearsarge Regional High School Band will be playing music and will lead us on the parade from the town hall up to the Pine Grove Cemetery and the American Legion will be having an open house to recognize veterans. June 15th, here at the Historical Society, we'll be opening up our exhibit of Warner's 250 years, and that exhibit will be open on Tuesdays from 1 to 4, and Saturdays 10 to 1 from June throughout uh, Fall Foliage Festival weekend. Then we have some fun music. Nick's other band is gonna be playing down at the Jim Mitchell Park. We'll have food, there'll be raffles, and they'll play probably from 5 to 8.30. July 4th is always a big event here in Warner with the July 4th Pancake Breakfast starting 7.30 to 11 at the church in Warner. Uh, accompanied with a new uh, activity, we'll be having a blueberry and strawberry bake sale um, at the same time. So you can come have breakfast and get your dessert for later in the evening on July 4th at the church. August 25th is going to be the Lower Warner Meeting House uh, annual church service that we do in conjunction with the United Church of Warner and that will be starting at 10 a.m. We're doing a Town Reads which is going to read about Warner's town history written by Walter Harriman and that will take place at 
on September 8th at the Town Hall at 4 p.m. September 14th is another big day. That's the Incorporation Day. Caleb Parsons is going to be reading the proclamation that declared that Warner had become a township. And we'll have music by the Hopkinton Town Band, and we'll be providing um, hamburg, hot dogs, chips, and drinks. So that will be starting around 4 o'clock on that Saturday. October 11th, 12th, and 13th, Fall Foliage Festival. The theme is Happy Birthday to Warner. So there'll be, hopefully, lots of interesting floats uh, for the parade this year on Sunday, which starts at 1. Uh, all the museums will be open with exhibits. And on October 14th, which is Indigenous Peoples Day, we'll be having uh, a planting of an elm tree in the Arboretum up at the Indian Museum to celebrate that day. November brings Veterans Day. And with Veterans Day, we're going to work with the Legion to produce a little history of the American Legion Hall being built in 1930s. And we will also be having probably a supper at the Town Hall to celebrate this event. We will have our final closeout um, event at the Mount Kearsarge Indian Museum on December 21st, where we'll have a winter solstice event uh, with bonfires, uh, cocoa, s'mores. People can write their resolutions and throw them into the bonfire and send good wishes for Warner to set, celebrate their 300th anniversary uh, 50 years from now. If you want more information about what's happening, you can go to the Warner Historical Society Facebook page or to the website or to the Kearsarge Area Chamber of Commerce. Thanks, Rebecca. There is so much to do in our region and especially during Warner's 250th anniversary celebration. For a complete and up-to-date rundown of all of their activities during the year, go to warnerhistorical.org and click Warner's 250th events. Hannah Flanders of Sweet Beet Market and Cafe will give us an update on the activities of the Kearsarge Food Hub. And we'll close with David Ernster, another one of MJ Harrington's fine craftsmen. Tune in to our replay of Game of the Week this Sunday and Monday at noon and 7 p.m. This week it's girls basketball as Kearsarge hosts Monadnock. Check out the program schedule at YCNNow.com for the most up-to-date information on games, Yankee Chronicle, and specials. I'm Abby Peel. Join us again next week at the same time as we come to you from MJ Harrington Jewelry on Main Street in Newport for an all-new edition of Yankee Chronicle. This program is supported by H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Their full service model offers oil delivery, propane, motor fuels with design, installation, service and maintenance of all types of oil, gas and alternative energy systems, as well as air conditioning, water conditioning systems and their highly trained and friendly staff will assist you throughout the process of buying, installing, and servicing a full line of energy products. H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Echo Communications, a digitally integrated commercial printer and mailer located in New London, New Hampshire since 1997, with roots going back much further as the Country Press, AccuMail, and the home of the Kearsarge Shopper. Echo Communications. Main Street Bookends of Warner. For books, toys, games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art. Main Street Bookends of Warner. The Innertown Record. Your weekly hometown community newspaper covering the Kearsarge, Sunapee, Sunshine region of New Hampshire. The Innertown Record.